Hello everyone, my name is Megan Lavoda, and today I'm gonna to be answering a question that I got from Holly asking, how do you see and know yourself? <clears throat> well, this was in a response to a video that I recently did that I'll link um, somewhere up here uh, that I was talking about the desire to be seen and how that can show up differently in different people and all that. And Holly asked, how do you see and know yourself? And so I'm gonna, explain sort of ramble about that it's probably not going to be a clear concise answer so if you're looking for a simple answer perhaps don't watch this video but this is a simple question you know it's very straightforward but it's not necessarily easy to answer and if it was easy to answer humans would not be asking this question over and over again like throughout uh time so i'm gonna respond to that question and if you have a question that's either similar to this or a clarifying question uh, about any other video I've done or anything I say here uh, comment below and I try and do one of these Q&A videos once a week so the first thing that came to mind when Holly asked this question about seeing and knowing yourself was uh, Carl Jung's individuation process and I'm gonna be diving in there for real and making a lot more informative videos about that because I really love that theory. I really resonate with that theory. And basically the individuation process is the achievement of self-actualization <clears throat> through a process of integrating the conscious and the unconscious. So for those of you who don't know, Carl Jung is the person who originally came up with the system of eight cognitive functions that Myers-Briggs uh, personality type indicator uses and also um, socionics personality type theory uses. They were both inspired by Carl Jung. And Carl Jung also had these other theories about self-actualization and the shadow and the ego and all this. And there are many people today that are trying to connect those things. Uh, shout out to Eric Thor, who is a uh, very much neo Jungian sort of person uh, on YouTube who talks about these theories and how they relate um, to the individuation process. Not everybody in the type community is really connecting those things. Um, Myers-Briggs, they, I'm sure some people who are Myers-Briggs certified talk about it, but in general, uh, this is not one of the main um, points that Myers-Briggs talks about, you know, when you're trained and stuff. I'm not personally trained. My dad was trained. Several people I know were trained, and so I'm pretty familiar with the process. Um, so I guess I'm just saying that these were two ideas that Carl Jung had, and so there might be some sort of connection there. And I have been thinking about things like, well, I mean, we all talk about shadow functions, or you hear about that idea of shadow functions when it comes to personality theory a lot, but um, before I even really read up on the individuation process, um, I have sort of come to a very similar understanding of Carl Jung. And so I'm going to share some quotes from him in this video, but I also just want to make clear that a lot of this is my own views as well. Um, the things I'm quoting are going to be, you know, directly from Carl Jung, but he's not the only person to talk about self-actualization as a means of integrating the conscious and the unconscious. Lots of spiritual teachers today, such as Teal Swan, uh, talk about that as well. So a lot of people were inspired by Carl Jung's idea of individuation though. So Carl Jung, I'm also gonna link this amazing video from Alchemy of Ideas uh, on YouTube um, that talks about uh, just a great overview of the individuation process. And a lot of the quotes that I'm gonna be using from Carl Jung, I found from that video, so thank you for making it easy to access. But in general, the main, so we all have a conscious and unconscious aspect of ourselves. You could think of conscious as light and you could think of unconscious as dark. Light doesn't mean good and dark doesn't mean bad. But we can bring things to light by shining our light on it, AKA shining our consciousness on the unconscious. So 
I, you know, as I, my little YouTube tagline uh, that I have um, on my, I think, cover photo and my Twitter cover photo is self-awareness leads to self-understanding, which leads to self-transformation. And I know that's sort of cheesy, but this is what I've come to realize, like, in my own life, in my own observations, which really aligns with the individuation process. Um, it change, seeing yourself can really start by shining a light on it. And so I think a lot of people are afraid of their shadow. They're afraid of their unconscious because it seems like a lot of mess. It seems like a lot of work. They don't necessarily know if they're capable of working through it and all that. But the first step and the major step, the step that does most of the transformation is just simply shining a light on it. And shining a light is a metaphor for really just putting your consciousness on it. So the fact that you're even watching this video, the fact that you're even thinking about your subconscious is shining a light on it. Because consciously right now, as you are listening to this video, your consciousness is acknowledging that the shadow exists. That's the first part, or that's the first step to really seeing yourself. That's the first step to understanding yourself. The more you focus conscious attention on something, and the deeper your focus, the more you can understand it. But again, the first step is shining your light on it, being aware that your shadow even exists. Because the thing is, we all have a persona. So we have the ego that is, or I'm not gonna define these things right now, you can look them up. We have the ego, we have the shadow, then we have the persona. And what I was gonna say about the persona is that um, we all craft these sort of personas of how we want to come across to people. And the more we attach ourselves to these personas, the harder it is to truly see and know yourself. So connecting that back to the question. Um, because ourselves are multifaceted. And so I'm gonna share a quote about, uh, a quote from Carl Jung, he said, what most people overlook or seem unable to understand is the fact that I regard the psyche as real. So I think it's important to realize that the psyche in, in includes the persona, the ego, the, the shadow, like both the conscious and the unconscious. And so if our psyche is real and really what I, what I believe and what I think he would agree with as well is that the darkness within you and your unconscious, it wishes to be brought to light. It wishes to be seen. And that correlates with my video where I was talking about how we do, to some extent, have that desire to be seen. So the whole idea of the individuation process is about striving toward completeness which is also referred to as the wholeness of the personality. It's not about perfection. It's, a, it's about becoming whole and acknowledging the darker aspects of you. So you could think of it using cognitive functions. You could think of it as those different aspects of yourself, but cognition is not the only way that the shadow exists. This could be, you know, memories. This could be traumas. This could be emotions. Anything that you don't deem worthy enough to include in the persona that you craft is the shadow. Anything that you are unaware of and the desire to become aware of it is the first step because once you're aware, then once you're looking at what's going on, it becomes easier to understand because the natural um, desire of the shadow is to be seen and so and I'm gonna go into this metaphor again I know that this is sort of cheesy it might seem trite it might seem difficult to understand despite uh, simple to explain but it really is as easy as flipping a light switch on when something's dark you can't see what's going on um, it's mysterious it's not you're not aware of it you just literally flip the light on and then that's no longer the case. You can't ignore it anymore. And most things in the shadow we wish to ignore. And so to truly see and know yourself, you have to be willing to flip the light on 
And a lot of us, as I mentioned before, we're worried about in, entangling. We're worried about all the effort it might take to untangle everything that's going on down there. And I resonate with that. I understand why people would fear that. Uh, but it is as simple as turning the light on. You will understand what to do once the light's on and it you won't be able to pretend it's not there. It's not about what to do. So really try and get that out of your head. Whether you, whether you agree or disagree with me now, I invite you to experiment with the idea that to truly see and know yourself has nothing to do with what you do. Once the light comes on and you see the shadow, don't worry about what to do with that information. Because if you know that information, that is simply all it takes to transform it. So... Carl Jung also talked about how this individuation process happens naturally and but it doesn't have to happen naturally. We can consciously and intentionally look into our shadow and try and um, we can consciously look into our shadow and try and bring those things to light and it's going to be so much easier if you just vow that you want to do that because if not the shadow is going to want to bring itself to light anyway and so if you are the conscious creator of that process it becomes a lot easier and so I have a Carl Jung quote or a couple quotes about this he said the difference between the natural individuation process which runs its course unconsciously in the one which is consciously realized is tremendous. In the first case, consciousness no, nowhere intervenes. The end remains as dark as the beginning. In the second case, so much darkness has come to light. The personality is permeated with light. The consciousness necessarily gains in scope and insights. Um, hold on. So, and then here's another quote. Uh, what on a lower level had led to the wildest conflicts and to panicky outbursts of emotion now looks like a storm in the valley seen from the mountaintop. This does not mean that the storm is robbed of its reality, but instead of being in it, being in it one is above it. So, pretty much um, shining a light on your shadow is like being in the eye of the storm it is wi being willing to go into the storm, going into the, the darkness and trusting that you will be in the eye of the storm. Because when you're in the eye of the storm, it can't hurt you. You are in the storm. You are one with the storm. You're becoming whole. It is, um, it's nothing to fear because it is you, is the whole idea of integration. So pretty much how I how I would add to that quote and interpret it in a more modern day, I guess, way of explaining. And now this is my uh, opinion. You can disagree with me, of course. I always feel like I have to say those disclaimers and I'm trying to stop because I know that some of you might be annoyed by all the disclaimers, but then I still sort of feel the need like I have to. But anyway, let's talk about it. Okay, so the way I see it is as you're naturally um, going about life, the psyche is real, right? So your light and your darkness, your consciousness and your unconsciousness are both attracting your reality to you. People are responding to both. They aren't just responding to the parts of you that are in your persona that you uh, love and that you agree with and that you are wish to put out there. They are also responding to the shadow parts of you. That's why there are people where even though they look great on the surface, you have a funny feeling about them or you have a hard time trusting them or you see an ulterior motive in them that they might not see. This happens with everybody and everybody has a shadow and everybody has that. And so most people oftentimes they will get people reacting negatively to them and they won't know why because it's like, what are you reacting to? And it's like, they're reacting to the shadow that you can't see. 
And that's why if you look around and you think that people seem really unself-aware, it's because they are still embodying the shadow. Even though they can't see it, everybody around them still can see it and everybody around them can still um, understand it. So let's say that somebody, um, let's say that if you're like a guy trying to find a girlfriend and you go to a bar or whatever and this guy like compliments the girl's outfit or is like "Ooh, what's your tattoo mean or whatever and he has this vibe and he in his mind thinks oh i'm being nice i'm just complimenting but then the girl might perceive it as oh my gosh you're thirsty you're just trying to like sleep with me or you're just trying to get proof that you are worthy or use me for validation, whatever it is. Um, that might be true. If she, if she gets that vibe, it might be correct. But just because the guy thinks, what, I'm being a nice guy. And that's just a sort of a example, but just because you think you're being one way doesn't mean that that's the whole story. And that's the whole point of seeing and knowing yourself is being open the, see we all have negative qualities right and we shove them down for a reason because our ego doesn't like to acknowledge the fact that we have bad qualities so people can have good intentions and still have bad qualities like that guy in the example probably had a good intention and there also was nothing wrong with him having a desire to be worthy and there was nothing wrong with him wanting to be loved you know nothing wrong with that at all but what people can react to and what they tend to notice is when your shadow is super shoved down and you aren't aware of it, it can create this sort of like split personality that people react to uh, whether you see it or not. So the natural individuation process is that events will come up that will sort of force you to acknowledge the shadow. Like maybe a guy who is suppressing the real reasons why they want to date a girl or compliment her tattoo whatever perhaps if someone is repressing the real reason maybe they'll get into an altercation with someone where they call out something and then that person gets defensive and they argue whatever like different events or maybe you maybe you are repressing your need for love and then you get rejected or like different events will happen in your life it's like all a mirror to you it's all a mirror so if you keep attracting a similar situation, chances are that's your shadow asking to be brought to light. And so if ever, so it's on the one hand, you're trying to see and know yourself, right? But on the other, it's every time events happen to you, processing those things, shining a light on those things. What does this mean for me? How could I learn from this? And if you do that time and time again, you will be able to see and know yourself because um, those aspects that are coming up are reflections of you to some extent because it's your it's your life and you know we all it's I, the way I see it is that there's all this energy and we're all sort of bouncing off of each other you know um, you know I believe in metaphysics and law of attraction I can explain more of that in other videos but like it might seem like to some people like that they don't want to read into, um, they don't want to read into the fact that something that happens to them has to do with them because they'd rather separate who they are from the reality around them and just think it's such a, it's a coincidence. Well, Carl Jung himself actually talked about synchronicity and said that events can be connected by meaning rather than a direct cause. And so in my opinion, in my opinion, it's like whether or not it's a coincidence is irrelevant because you can still connect it with meaning because humans are always making everything mean something. And so if you could connect, find a meaning of what that means to you, it, it's, not, it's not the same as being like arrogant and assuming everything has to do with you because everything has to do with everybody. Every event that happens in anyone's life has something to do with them. Like, if you, if you choose to see it that way, um, I invite you to experiment with that idea. I invite you to think about the events that happened in your life and see if you could find some sort of connection of how that event helped you understand something about yourself. So, I guess to sum up, 
you know, to sum up, there is, you shine a light on it personally in your own self-reflection and you can see these lights being shown on you naturally in your day-to-day -day interactions and uh, in your interpersonal interactions. And you, the choice is yours if you want to, if you don't consciously shine a light on things, if you don't consciously go through the individuation process, you're gonna have to learn the hard way time and time again. You're gonna attract the same lessons time and time again because if you don't choose to learn the lesson from the events that happen to you, you're gonna be given the same lesson and then you're gonna feel like you're living in a loop and a rat race and you can't get out. So a couple more things I wanna share before I end is another quote from Carl Jung that's related to this is it is the most painful procedure to tear off the, those veils. But each step forward in psychological development means just that, the tearing off of a new veil. We are like onions with many skins. We have to peel ourselves again and again in order to get to the real core. And so that's sort of the experience you can have with the people in your lives, with the events in your life, and use those things as tools to help you see yourself and know yourself even more. And the more you see things, the more you know it. Um, I know what a bench is. I, it doesn't take much thinking about it. And I know that's like sort of a dumb example, but knowing and thinking are different things. And to truly know, all it takes is to be able to engage with it, to, to see it, to feel it, to experience it. It's all, all it really takes. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much. This was an amazing question. If anybody has any questions about the individu individuation process in particular, I would love to do a video series on this and like read more about it and do some more research about it, about it um, so that I can start teaching these things and how it also connects with the 16 personality types theory that we know and love and that most of you have subscribed me for. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Um, I do personality typing sessions and mentorship and I have a free Facebook group. If you are interested in that, uh, those are linked below and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for listening to me ramble.